His entry into the People's Democratic Party was an exciting one for me. Um, not many people thought that he would be able to change the senatorial ticket uh, of the PDP for the Lagos West. Now, Lagos West is the most populated senatorial district in Nigeria. And for somebody who was then under 40, taking advantage of the then just passed, not too young to roll bill, you know, to clinch that ticket is a testimony to um, valuable strength and valuable determination. I mean, that um, Lagos West is highly sought after. He was able to clinch it to get in the Blue Democratic Party, and he did it by working with so many of our stakeholders, working with so many of the delegates. So he won that ticket and he ran a brilliant campaign. Um, he enjoys uh, campaigning publicly with people, he enjoys listening to them, he enjoys interacting with them, and he had a very, very brilliant run in that election. He scored the highest votes for any Lagosian in that 2019 cycle. Badwa is our son. He has um, very deep roots in uh, Nigeria, deep roots of people who have given great service to the country, and particularly Lagos State. Starting with Justice S.B. Rose, uh, the beginning of the last century, S.B. Rose was the second Nigerian judge to be appointed to the judicial system. He then moved on in 43, 1943 to the Privy Council. Then my father was a judge. Esby Rose himself lived at Igboshiri, where today you have the Lagos City uh, Town Hall. And my father grew up in the house of Esby Rose. My father went to study law in England and then came out and became a judge here in Nigeria. His son, my brother, also served in Lagos State as Bade Rose Bible, served in Lagos State as DPP, and then he eventually went on to become a judge, High Court judge, he went to Court of Appeal, and then Supreme Court. He just retired from the Supreme Court last year, without any blemish. Uh, we also have uh, Chief uh, Rita Rose, who was the uh, most powerful of Lagos and uh, lived all his life here in Lagos State. When I first met architect Radimor Revival, uh, I said to myself, well, look, this is a young Lagosian, and he has name recognition. Of course, everybody knows his family. I won't mention who they are, but everybody knows his family in Lagos Island, and now in Nigeria as a, as a whole, within legal circles. So when I met Radical for the first time in 2019, I said this young man should actually be good for governor. But I will support a very good candidate of the caliber of architect Radical was right. And then of course when I heard that he actually is a graduate, as an alumna, alumnus sorry, of the very famous MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, I said to myself, how many people, ex-MIT uh, students, graduates rather, who have run for office in Nigeria? I'm not aware of any. And of course, I have friends and, and in-law who are MIT uh, graduates. And I mentioned it to them, they said, oh, we didn't know that this guy went to MIT. So I said, well, he did. And you can't go to MIT and be a dummy. And you can't come out of MIT and be a dummy. To get into MIT, every single uh, student who's in America wants to go to MIT. It's always a student, it's always a university of first choice. So I strongly commend uh, architect Badabal Rose Vival to you as a gubernatorial candidate for Lagos State in the forthcoming election. You could have done so many other things. Yes. Why politics? Um, because I feel that we complain too much. You know, my generation, we talk too much. And there are problems that are only going to get worse. 
the more we leave them to fester. And rather than just talking about it, we should start taking action and Activity. doing things about it. Yeah. Yeah. Badebo is my in-law. And um, what I admire about him is, you know, his passion for youth involvement in politics. I, I had the privilege of uh, interviewing him during his local government run. And uh, one of the things that stood out for me is his um, unrelenting, untiring, passionate, you know, commitment to a better Lagos. Uh, I believe he deserves an opportunity at whatever position he chooses to run for. Because uh, I see people like him as a breath of fresh air in Nigerian politics. Uh, if given an opportunity, I have no doubt in my mind that he will do very, very because he has all the energy, the passion, and the commitment, and the spirit to discharge whatever responsibilities is given. Prior to that, I want to work on tackling voter apathy. Because it's very important that people participate in politics. We cannot leave election day to the people that just look at their PVC cards as ATMs that yield every four years. People that make those kind of decisions can never move the country forward. And a politician that has to spend that kind of money to win an election will never do anything for these people because he has to recoup his investment. And two, if he knows that in four years time he has to share money again and he will get what he wants, then there's no motivation to even deliver, especially at the local government level. And what is also very important at a local government level is that it's the most vulnerable people that feel the effect of when the government is not working. So um, for me, fighting voter apathy, voter education, tackling the working class. Working class is not necessarily elite. It's people that believe in dignity of labor. They get up every morning and they go out to work. If those people, if you can convince them to get involved, they will show up and they will not be bought. So tackling that and doing the next one. Thank you very much, Balebo. Simply put, if you're a young person and you're listening, if you're a young person and you're watching, our mumu don't do. I swear. <laughs> don't young do. people. Don't like Charlie Boy would say, our mumu don't do. We had to get up and be counted. Yes. It's Thank been nice so talking much, to you. Same Keep up the good job. Bible Boy Ruth Viber is a gentleman who I'm very well acquainted with. Um, and I do so because I find him as a very honest, trustworthy, hardworking, extremely intelligent, extremely bright, one of the very, very best out of the crop of, um, uh, should I call it, next gen politician, uh, but his, his time is now. Um, he's bright, resourceful, um, can think out of the box, um, fits the bill, um, ticks too many boxes, competent, able, articulate, honest, authentic. Um, the, the, the adjectives just go on and on. But I'm saying this not from a position of flattery, but from a position of truth and honesty. Um, what you see is what you get, um, and he's a, he's a true Omoluabi. After the elections, he did not relent. He was still attending public hearings, advocating for youth involvement, and was very active during the NSAS movement. Uh, position or not, I actually think that he's always been for the people. I also believe that he's been called to serve. Um, he is a husband and a father. So when people say the world is a global village, we also have to understand that there are several parts of the world that have put prohibitive bans on this technology. This includes the European Union and it also includes countries like Japan that are technological giants in this country and have chosen to put the safety and well-being of their citizens first. Benebo is a nice person. When he came to this party, I know the way it's in terms of mobilizing people, dealing with and very, very respectful. My sister, my father, oh, that please, I read all the things you have been saying on the road, I'm ah. getting everything. It's a real life. It's all right. It is not you. It is not you. It is not you. It is not right. it is not you. It is not you that sent me to go and become servant. It's me that decided I want to be servant. So I must take it. Is part of it. The day I make all of you happy, you two, I pray that you two will praise me. And you have precise me today. When I make you happy, you will praise me. So please, 
Can we start the meeting now? Yes. Am I forgiving? Yes. Very good morning to everyone from south of France, Côte d'Azur. My name is Suleiman Jididi. I'm the owner and founder of Benvol Consulting Group. We are experts in oil and gas and food commodity sourcing and trading. We have partners all around the world. And Mr. Badibo Rodez Vivo is our trusted partner. But before that, he's our true friend. And we support him. I just want to say a few things I know about uh, the man we call Chinedu Padebo. Chinedu is an energetic, young, intelligent, articulate gentleman. I mean, if I will begin to talk about him, it will take me the whole day. A, a young man of his age, what he knows about Nigeria, his ambition, of what Nigeria should be, where we should be by this time. You begin to wonder at that age where he grabs all this very knowledge. And um, the first time I met him, it was through his mother, who is our own daughter. And um, setting my eyes on him, I just like him as a person. And ever since then, I have been close to him, despite the fact that we are not of the same age bracket, but I picked interest in whatever he's doing. For sure, I will tell you people that he's an in law, he's married to one of the main revered gentleman daughter in Ibeland. He's our son, our grandson, and the mother came from a place that I so much love because my baptismal father is from that village, as you mean, uh, Dr. Emiche. I mean, I'm talking about the 60s, who took care about me. So, the, his pedigree is so wonderful. And, and I believe that if by any chance we have any reason to say we want to uh, believe the person we trust, I think she may do by the ball. Vivo is a man I can tell you of. has always shown leadership qualities. Uh, looking back now, I remember during the 1993 June 12 rioting, we had dropped them off at school, himself and his siblings, at Lali Oluwa Lake Christland School, and went on to Lagos Island where we were working. While we were in Lagos Island, rioting broke out. And we had problems coming back to Lagos to pick them from school. But to uh, my amazement, by the time we got back home to school, they had gone. And I was wondering how they came home. By the time we came back home, we saw him and his siblings. And we asked him what happened. He said he was there, we were running helter skater. He didn't want to enter Muka. He just carried them and even took our neighbor's three children. I said, how did you do? I said, he carried my neighbor's child because that one was younger. He carried the back that one and they got back home. And I looked at it. I said, this boy, he has empathy to help others. 
and to lead. Because it takes a lot of grace for somebody at that age to be able to take six other children plus himself, seven, and walk from Lady Moluwale to Obasa Road. Then secondly, he showed again why he was graduating in EAB in Paris. During their graduation ceremony, a white boy stood up to tell the whole world that he was graduating that day thanks to Badebo. He said because he was having issues getting done with his studies, but that Badebo was spending time during winter to take him out of the school to go and lecture him. And based on that, he was able to graduate. You know, he really made Nigerians, they are very proud. Empathy is number one. Hmm. And empathy is not something you just get. Empathy comes from relationships, interactions, you know. It affects the way you make policy. It affects the way you govern. So with 243,000 votes, I mean 243,000 people entrusted Gladibor with their senatorial mandate, you know. Um, unfortunately, it was less than what the APC got. That election was rigged. Um, violence broke out in about three local governments. Those three local governments, they, their, combined, um, their combined voting population was about 90-something thousand, whereas the margin of victory that the APC was claiming was about 79,000. So, ordinarily, those three local governments should have been cancelled. And Badibo again pushed on to the tribunal. He took the case to the tribunal. And I know you know how much he had committed to that election in terms of his um, mental energies, in terms of his physical energies, in terms of his financial resources. But, you know, he decided that he was going to go ahead and um, push the case at the tribunal. Those are the kind of people that, you know, people, some of us in PDP, always love. So he's not someone that you can underestimate. Um, he might have a gentle man. Um, he has a gentle, gentle, calm and gentle disposition. But I know him very well. He's somebody who, once he sets his eyes on something, he goes all out for it. Um, he goes all out. When I think of him, I remember the, there's a Yoruba adage that says, Agbatolo Minimo. Okay, paru, well, that means you know, a, a drum, it's only the empty barrel that makes noise. So bad boy is not someone who just makes noise. Or rather, there's another proverb that actually captures it for me, which is that um, You know, you might see him and think, you know, is this lightweight, but he is somebody who is very solid on the inside and also physically too in terms of campaigning and, con and contesting. Um, so for me, I think, you know, he's one of the brightest of our generation. He is one of the, 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 the most committed to the cause of the people, and he is definitely a bright and shining star within the political firmament. Um, and I, the, the sky um, is only the starting point for Gladiboro's survival, in my opinion. Hi, Gladiboro. How are you? I can speak how I please you. Very, very pleased to work with you on a sabbatic project. I very much appreciate your modern and innovative vision on the planning together in your city. I think that this characteristic make you a good, good political. I hope that we'll meet again for concluded the DICA project and start new project with you. Good luck, good luck, Gadebo, good luck. I'm calling GRB. Also referred to him as the man with the empathy. Because there is no time we were talking to him, he's always after the interest of the people. And I was his coordinator in 2019. And all through the election, down to the tribunal. Hi. My name is JP Kalma from the Philippines. I met GRV at MIT in a class called Structuring Low-Income Housing for Developing Countries by Professor Gother. As far as I remember, um, his focus has always been on affordable housing and the concept of affordable luxury. He was the one who opened my eyes with our conversations on mass customization and new ideas of home delivery innovation. I believe GRV has always been committed to helping his fellow men to access affordable housing, even back in school 15 years ago. And presently, I'm working with him and he intends to do this through our collaboration um, through a tech company called HomeCube, which offers home building and empowers the users with AI and blockchain.
Um, good day. My name is Akin Lawe. I'm a pastor and I'm also an industrialist. I want to speak about Badiwell Revival, whom I've known for over 11 years. He comes from a very good family background, well trained, well behaved man, and uh, well schooled. He's an architect, a businessman, and a politician. I've had cause to work with Badiwell over the years. We, uh, one or two projects, and one of particular note was the one he designed for us. The design was amazing, and she speaks to the kind of training that he has and background. At good cost, showing integrity, and of course, it was delivered right on time. I've known him, I've paid attention to his works in various ways, and I really want to recommend him for great jobs. I want to recommend him in the business space. I want to recommend him in the political space. He has age on the side for me at my age, gazing at 60. I believe these are people that can really define the future of our country. He has integrity. He has capacity. He has knowledge. And I believe these are the kind of people that can drive this nation to the promised land. What about as we call him on this side, is my nephew, the mother, Mrs. Kichi Rose Fargo, is my sister. Mother Thanks. was an interest in helping the common people. In fact, it's a passion which is in him. And his foray into politics and uh, governance. The whole idea is to contribute. Like other young people, millions of young people across Nigeria and the world, is utmost best for a better society. I know seeing Badibo grow from when he started with his campaigns, it's always been, you know, so amazing and mobilizer he's been, so uh, fully focused on governance and the people. And what more of is a trip with him is that he's actually a relatable and easy person to meet up with and talk to. So Badibo has always driven, you know, a people conscious or a, an electorate centric position on issues. And now it's not even about the party or the vehicle he, he's in because I mean, it was great watching him go to co uh, from COA to PDP and run for the Senate and pull quite over 200,000 votes. His continuous drive over the years we've been together has always been for love of country. Um, I'll say Badabo is a fine gentleman and he's someone who is to watch in the future. The future of this country, of course, will be a vehicle which Badabo Vival Roads, of course, is in. By the ball, I've watched the last couple of years has shown strong courage, vigor, and determination to bring change to Lagos. He has been persistent, consistent in his desire to stay in politics despite all the odds. We, as Nigerians, need a new direction. And I honestly believe a new direction must come from the younger people. We cannot afford any longer to make mistakes of the past. We must hold the bull by the horn. Adibo has a pedigree, energy, and strength to bring this change. It is critical at this moment that we get all of you involved in this movement. It reminds me very much of my younger brother, late Akitoye Branko Rhodes, who started his political season during the Abacha period and his desire to change Lagos. I believe that we must now 
see this as probably the last chance we've got, especially the young ones. You guys have to join us in changing Nigeria's direction. It's important that uh, the time of sleeping should just end and we also have to wake up to things. Therefore, um, where we need to register as voters registration, I tell you to do it, go ahead and do it because you can say I can exercise your right to put somebody in power and to also remove somebody. Hello? So you need to have your voters card. If you don't have your voters card, then you probably want to go and look for gun to remove somebody. We don't need guns. We need the voters card. It's more powerful than guns. You hear me? And also, it's not out of place, it's not out of order. If you are a member of a political party, it's for you to decide, look around, and choose which of the parties you want to vote for, or you want to be a member of, get their card, so that you, when they are talking, you can also talk. Um, I want you to just rally around and talk to people, talk to your friends about our uh, beloved brother and friend, and I'm sure um, we'll be happy for it by the time the election is done. Now, the election is around the corner. You see campaigns, posters everywhere, so it's important that we are active. Put the people you want to be in power there. Don't stay at home on the day of election. Make sure you have a card. Be involved. It was in the words of Franz Fanon in his book, Richard of the Heart, he says, every spectator is either a traitor or a coward. So if you are spectating, you are either a traitor or you are a coward. But I'm sure our God's children are not traitors and we are not cowards because we have not been given the spirit of fear. So I want to encourage you all, please stand behind our brother and God bless you.